come to church on this beautiful Sunday morning. Welcome to worship and church in this way. Uh, a new way for all of us, but hopefully um, uh, something that might feed us for this day and for the week ahead. We're going to go through um, the confession and forgiveness, some prayers, and then the reading. And then we'll end with the prayers of the people before the blessing and dismissal. Um, I'm not sure how much time this whole thing is going to take, so uh, we'll just see as we go along. But thank you all for joining us this morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive the good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Je Jesus, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel is a reading from the ninth chapter of the book of St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned that this man was born blind? Did he sin or his parents? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I'm just going to pause right here and say a few words. Uh, I connect with the beginning of this gospel quite a bit because... Um, that's one of the questions that we ask ourselves sometimes, isn't it? Who sinned that this is going on? The thing that is going on is going on. Um, especially in this time when we're um, battling the, the fear, the anxiety, and the confusion of the COVID-19 uh, crisis and this coronavirus crisis. Who sinned that we are under this cloud? But Jesus reminds us that we cannot even judge good from bad. Because whenever God's works are revealed, that is good. I'm reminded of a new song that I've been listening to lately by a group called AJR, and it's called 100 Bad Days. Basically, the song is about 100 bad days creating 100 good stories. And 100 good stories can be used, well, in the song to make this man interesting in parties. Um, for us, I guess, a hundred bad days, a hundred bad situations can be used to create a hundred good stories in order to reveal the good news in our lives in all the different ways that we might be able to do that. It'll help us to grow. It'll help us to become what God is making of us, helping us to share the good news in the world, whatever is happening in our lives. It's an interesting way to begin the story of this man born blind. Let us continue. 
When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Now, my, my seminary professor, Sandra Snyders, um, said that it could also be translated as, Go wash in the scent one. And that's especially relevant for, for us as Christians because um, we wash in the blood of the Lamb, in the blood of baptism. We are washed clean. And this man is being told basically to do the same, to wash his heart in the scent one, and his eyes will truly be opened. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors of, and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it's someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. Now perhaps this part of the scripture kind of indicates that um, although the man now is able to see and sees Jesus, he's still coming to realize who Jesus is for him in his life. So it's part of his transition, his transformation from one thing to another, uh, from a man formerly blind to a man who can fully see what God is doing in the world and in his life. Now enter into the story those who do not know Jesus and who are still blind, if not physically, in their heart. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes. Then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. And so they said again to the man born blind, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called his parents, who had received, who, whose son had received the sight, and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? See, this is part of a scare tactic by the Pharisees. They're trying to intimidate his parents. Uh, luckily, they're very diplomatic in their answer. His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for a second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, actually giving glory to God. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that although I was blind, now I see. Sharing the gospel here. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? They answered them. He answered them. I have told you already, and you do not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know even where he comes from. The man answered, How, Here is an astonishing thing. 
You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could not do these things. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. See, the Pharisees answered the question from the beginning of the story about who sinned that the man was born blind. In this quote, You were born entirely in sin. It's their belief that it's his, his family, the, the, the man's parents, that conceived him in sin and he was born in sin and therefore um, he has no hope for not being in sin. But we know that in Jesus we are truly clean and our hearts are pure because of him. Jesus heard that they had driven the man out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not born blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So the story is over, but our story is still at the beginning. In this story, we see lives changed because of the encounter with Jesus, between sight and true sight. No doubt our world is changing right now, maybe even as drastically as for this man who was born blind. And how are we going to see in this new reality? Will we be able to look at our neighbor the same again? Or can we see better in the light of God's grace? One of the things that I noticed at this time is the attitude toward the virus. There are some who believe that I'm not in the category of those who die, so I don't have anything to worry about. In callous hearts, perhaps, or is in ignorance? I do not know. It. Um, is a type of not being able to see outside of oneself, however, and how one's actions do actually affect other people. But yet we have also seen kindness, amazing kindness in many different ways. Kindness toward the elderly, people offering help, businesses opening early in order to provide a time when the elderly can come to, uh, to shop, And get what they need without being around a lot of other people. And also people calling just to check in on them. And what we're doing for one another right now. Can we sustain this sort of change, however? Caring for our neighbor and looking outside of ourselves what's going on with one another? Does it take being thrown out of the synagogue for us to change? For us to be able to see others in the world? for who they are? Or can we take lessons from these bad days in order to learn something that will change us and help us to change the world? Jesus is constantly warning us about darkness. When we look inside ourselves, we see the darkness because we cannot see the light outside of the world, in the world. But when we focus on Jesus, when we focus outside of ourselves, we can see the true light in the world who is calling us to something bigger than just ourselves. Now, we need to change in many different ways. We need to embrace the light that Jesus offers. And as Jesus says, I am the light of the world. So let us follow that light and do the works of our Father in heaven. 
Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is generous and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Each petition will end, Hear us, O God. Please respond, Your mercy is great. God of insight, open the hearts of the church and the world to all who testify to your deeds of power. Raise up voices in your church that are often silenced or overlooked due to age, gender expression, race, or economic status. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of insight, empower us to care for the land and all living things that dwell in it and beneath it. Provide rich soil for crops to grow. Bring rain to land suffering drought. Protect hills and shorelines from damage caused by erosion. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of insight, bring peace to all peoples and nations. Anoint leaders who seek goodness, righteousness, and truth on behalf of all. Frustrate the efforts of those who would seek to cause violence, division, or terror. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of insight, you care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer this day. Accomplish healing through the work of doctors, nurses, physical therapists, nutritionists, and all who tend to human bodies. We especially pray for Alan, Barbara, Bert, Betty Lou, Bob, Debbie, Jackie, Jean, Sandy, and Tova. We pray for those on our prayer list, our shut-in members, and for those we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts now. And Lord God, we also pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, that you bless them with healing and protection. We also pray for those who are sheltered in fear at this time, that you might bring a comforting and healing hand into their lives. We also pray for those in the military, especially Christopher, JT, Gage, Jared B, Jared M, John, Nate, Robert, Sarah, and Tim. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of insight, help this assembly lift up unique gifts of each person who enters, no matter their physical capacity, cognitive ability, or sensory need. Help us to be creative and brave in making our facilities and our ministries accessible to all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of insight, you call out to those who are asleep and awaken them to new life with you. We give thanks for your saints. Join us together with them as your children in this world and in the next. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. The peace of our Lord Christ be with you always. So go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.